G'day everyone and welcome to episode 24 of Rare and Resilient 1 in 5000 podcast and we are talking IARM and this week we have Billy from England and she's going to share her story of her beautiful little boy Jimmy who's 14 months old. Welcome to the podcast Billy. Hello how are you? Very good, very good. So you've uh, you've written about a story of uh, your journey with Jimmy. So if you want to go and read that, and then we'll have a chat afterward. Okay, okay. When I was pregnant, we went for a gender scan. We had the lady put the gender into an envelope, and then we got confetti cannons with pink or blue in them. We went home to let them off with Jimmy's big brother Jack. So we found out together what we was getting: a brother or a sister. What? On the twenty fifth of May. We set off the cannons and they was pink. Jack was getting a little sister and we was overjoyed to be having a little girl. As we already had a boy, I went out and got loads of pink bits and we had even picked a name out for our little girl. Then on the 27th of June, I had a further scan at the hospital and the lady told me that in fact, I was having a boy. I was very confused as I told her that our previous scan, we was told we was having a girl. The lady then had five sonographers come in and they all said that it was a boy. And that boy's in the background now, Jimmy. <laughs> Very vocal. My partner, Jack, couldn't come into any of the scans. One second, sorry. Let me get Jimmy out. Come on, Jimmy, you want to get involved? My partner, Jack, couldn't come into any of the scans as it was during the pandemic. So needless to say, he was just as shocked as me when I told him that his little girl isn't a girl, but in fact, it's a boy. Little did I know that at this time of this confusion was due down to medical problems that he would have been born with. With no issues being detected or picked up during any of the scans. On the 4th of November, 2020, I went into labor a few days before it was due. And we went into the hospital and ended up having an emergency cesarean. Jimmy was born at 11.34 p.m. and within a short time, the doctors took Jack aside and they told him that they'd identified a few issues with the baby. We weren't sure if the baby was a girl or a boy as all of his genitalia was inside the body. So they needed to perform some further examinations. These examinations found that Jimmy was definitely a boy and he was born with a condition called hyperspadius which is a rare abnormality of the male genitals. It mean, meant that when he weighs, he's from underneath and not at the tip of his ding hole. But that wasn't all. During the examination, they also found that Jimmy didn't have an opening to his bum and it was completely smooth. This is called anorectal malformation. Take a deep breath. You're all right. You're going really well. I only got to see him for a few seconds before he was whisked away and taken straight down into Nico. We were then informed that he would need to be transported to Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital to have urgent surgery by a specialist due to the seriousness of his condition. I had so much medication, I didn't really know what was going on. We were told only one of us could go with Jimmy to the hospital which was two and a half hours away from our home and we decided that it was best for Jack to go with him so I could try and recover from the c-section and I had to get back to our other son Jack. Jimmy had surgery to create his stoma on day two of life by surgeon Mr Tan and everything went really well. As Jack was with Jimmy he was the one who was initially taught how to care for the stoma and apply his bag. Six days after Jimmy was born, I was finally able to travel to Norfolk. You're doing really well. You're doing really well. I don't know what I'm crying now. Right. And again, Billy. So six days after Jimmy was born, I was finally able to travel to Norfolk to see my precious baby boy again as they told us that we'd be able to take him home. But once I got there, we was advised that because he had lost weight, we, they wasn't very happy for him to come home yet. While I was there, the stoma nurse, she come round to show me how to care for his stoma and how to change his bag. 
It was very, very scary with a baby so tiny. He ended up spending nine days in NICU. And whilst in hospital, they also did scans and found that Jimmy has a duplex kidney. Thankfully, this is something that isn't causing any problems and it shouldn't affect him at all. Jack brought Jimmy home on the 13th of November and he kept it as a surprise that he had been discharged. Jack came into our home while little Jack and I was having dinner and shouted through the house, is there room for two more? <sighs> little Jack was so excited to finally meet his baby brother. You're doing really good. Because to be fair, throughout Jimmy's whole, all of the operations and everything, I didn't really cry. I just had to do what I had to do. And yes. I was just a bit, I was numb to it all. Yes. And this, this is where the emotions are coming out. You're doing yeah. really good. It's crazy. Right. right. So with the stoma care, at first, I was so scared of hurting him or doing it wrong. But now that I look back, I think I was just scared of him with everything. So Jack continued to do his bags and they would leak so often. I would have to call Jack in from work to help me because I wasn't confident enough to do it by myself. We had a stoma nurse come over to help us and see how we was getting on. And a lady from Norfolk and Norwich called Billy Dean rang me to see how we was. She told me to go online and order different testers of stoma products as we was finding it hard to keep them to stick and they was only lasting a matter of hours. So I took Billy Dean's advice and ordered lots of bits. I then plucked up the courage after around 10 days of Jimmy being home and realising that I had to get on with it now and stop being so scared of him. His bag leaked during the night so I took him into the bathroom where I had all of his changing unit and I attempted his bag by myself. It was very scary and I was nervous, but we did it. We got there. I got the order to come through of all the products and we started practicing with all different bits and found our perfect products to keep Jimmy's bag sticking for two to three days. So we would cut the hole using the previous template of the bag. And we had a little Winnie the Pooh lavender pack that you'd put in the microwave. So we would put that in for one minute, lay the bag and a flange extender on the top of the Winnie the Pooh, while we took the old bag off and cleaned him with warm water. Then completely dry the area and apply an adhesive stick, which looks like a lollipop. They have a type of glue on them that kept the bag stuck for longer. Once that's applied, we then gave it around 30 seconds and applied the bag, held it down for another 30 seconds, and then apply a flange extender to the side of the bag that would always leak. And that used to be down by his skull, down to his fistula. We had many meetings with Mr. Tan and his team at Norfolk. And when Jimmy was six months old, he was booked in for his piece up surgery. This took place on the 18th of May, 2021. And the surgery took an excruciating seven and a half hours. When he came out of surgery and was in recovery, the nurse came out to me and said, I have a little boy here calling for his mum. <laughs> and sure enough, when we went into recovery, he had his eyes closed, shaking his head saying, mum, 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 mum. He was in a high dependency on a high dose of morphine the next day well up until the next day but in the afternoon the morphine was turned off and he was only on paracetamol we stayed in norfolk for a week after the surgery and thankfully it all went as planned and his recovery was great and then we came home ready to start dilations at two weeks post-op we went back to see mr tan and to have him show us how to perform the dilations and what to and what not to do we started on a size nine and had to get to a size six, 16, which seemed impossible at the time. At first it was horrific in the hospital being shown 
Jimmy was distressed. We was so upset at what we was putting him through. Initially, we couldn't comprehend that this is what we needed to do to him every day. And it was just heartbreaking. When we started doing the dilations at home, it was extremely difficult as Jimmy would scream and it was just awful. But after the first week, it got easier for us. And Jack and I would take it in turns as to who was holding him and who was doing the dilation. We soon got into a routine and Jimmy was nowhere near as distressed as when we first started. After the first week, it was time to go up to a size 10. Again, not as difficult as when we first started. And each time we went up a size, it did get easier. By size 12, Jimmy wouldn't even cry or be in any di discomfort. So that made it a lot easier. On the 28th of June, 2021, Jimmy had his colostomy closure, surgery done by Mr. Tan again. The surgery went all to plan and everyone was really happy with Jimmy's recovery. It was incredible how he just bounced back so quickly. It was like nothing had ever happened to him. Jimmy had his first ever dirty nappy around, it was around 15 hours after surgery. I've never cried so much to see a dirty nappy. <laughs> the doctors were talking to me and I was just crying. <laughs> <laughs> we, st we stayed in hospital this time for three days. We have to carry on with this dilation on until now. And we have started weaning a few months back and it has got less and less and soon we'll be able to fully stop. We have an appointment with Mr. Ambarrison at Norfolk on March the 10th to find out more about his next operation regarding his hyperspadius and hopefully we'll get a date in the diary. He will have a further three operations in total and we cannot thank Mr. Tan, Mr. Ambarrison and all of their teams at the Jenny Lynn Norfolk and Norwich enough for what they've done. <laughs> well done, Billy. And you know what? That's Jimmy in the background just saying how proud he is for you to go get through that because we know it was a big battle for you a few of the times when you were reading it. You didn't expect those emotions to come, did you? No, definitely not. Definitely not because I've read it so many times and obviously I've lived it. So I didn't, I didn't think that I would get so emotional, but reading it back, it seems so long ago of what we have been through with him, but he's still so tiny. Yeah, <laughs> and well, he's, he's still got so much to go through, but he's, you wouldn't really, you wouldn't, no one would even know that there was anything that's ever happened to him. No, and for those who are listening to the podcast right now, Billy's given Jimmy a real big hug just sitting there on his lap with him. One thing that I let's I just want to mention that you talked about the dilations, you're still doing them now. Yeah, we carried them on. And he's never had he's never gone down a size at all. We've never had any problems. Um he's now at a 16. We've we've been weaning from a few months of getting it less and less. Within the next few weeks, we will be stopping completely. I bet you can't wait for that. Yeah, well, to be honest, it, it doesn't bother him at all. Really? He doesn't mind it. Yeah, he doesn't mind it at all. So it's not a, it's not a chore. It's not hard work. In regard... <laughs> oh, Jimmy. <laughs> and in regard to his hyperspadius, I suppose the, the doctors have wanted to wait and get all the colorectal stuff out of the way before having him to go under some more surgery. Yeah, well, they said that um, usually with this surgery, they wait until they're one and a half anyway. So we was getting all of the other operations done, ready for these ones. Um, it could be a possibly two operations, but we're realistically, we're looking at three operations because where the hole is, they're going to have to move it in stages right. because it is the lowest that it can get. And does Jimmy he doesn't have... do things by half. Bless, <laughs> Bless him. And, and how does he go urinating at the moment? Is that okay? What... Yeah, that's absolutely fine. He's, he goes away absolutely fine. Yep. How does his big brother, Jack, how does he cope with it all? So when Jimmy, obviously I went into hospital and we thought that we was bringing Jack his brother or his sister home. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah. So when I came home without Jimmy, 
he was very confused. But he was only young, he was only a baby himself, really. He was only two. So he didn't really understand. He was more concerned where daddy was. Because obviously right. daddy never came home with me. But as soon as Jimmy did come home, Jack just loved him and just looked oh, after yeah. him, cuddled him, kissed him. His stone mine never paid. Didn't. Oh, Jimmy wants a kiss now. He just took it with a pinch of salt. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, even though we addressed the gender reveal at the time, how were you and Jack feeling when you were told two different things? It must have been incredibly difficult. Well, I couldn't believe it. I was, because obviously Jack couldn't come into the scan because of the pandemic. So I was, they'd done the scan and the lady said, oh, do you want to know what you're having? I said, well, I had a gender scan last week and I made a joke. I said, let's see if you make the same prediction. She went, oh, well, you're having a little boy. I went, no, I'm not. I'm having a girl. She went, no, you're not. <laughs> so she called in other people and they all said a boy. But they couldn't quite work. They wasn't 100% sure, but they was 98% sure. Yeah. I said, well, can I have a picture to show his dad? Because he's never going to believe me. <laughs> like, he's going to think I'm joking. And they wouldn't let me have a picture. So uh, I came out and I rang Jack and I said, oh, um, your little girl, Jack? He said, yeah, is everything all right? I said, yeah, but she's not a girl, she's a boy. And he was just, he was as shocked as me. And had you done the gender reveal with all the family and all that when you did the uh, all the pink uh, well, tannins and that? Me, me, Jack, my dad, little Jack, and we did ones with Jack's mum and dad as well. I can imagine they were just as shocked as you were when you had to tell them. <laughs> yeah. You don't really hear of it anymore, of um, people getting it wrong. But When the doctors first told you that they they weren't sure if you was a boy or a girl, were, or were you just totally out of it at but that stage? To be honest, I was completely out of it. I, see, I was in labour with Jimmy all day. We went to the hospital at six in the morning. So... I was completely gone. But when Jack came over to tell me, I was laughing because I I was in a different planet. <laughs> I didn't know what he was going on. I couldn't understand what he was going on about at all. Yes. And I could, it wasn't making sense in my head. I thought he was joking. So, yeah, Jack, he, he had to struggle with all that. You were away from Jimmy for... Oh, about Mind six that. six days were you initially? It was six days before I went up there, yeah. Geez, that must have been incredibly difficult. Jack must have done an incredible job to be up there 24-7 yeah. looking after him. Yeah, it was um, very, very hard. He definitely stepped up. Yeah, he did very well. And not only just to be in there with Jimmy, but the whole, in the intensive care of the babies, it's a hard place to walk into. Not only your child's in there, but there's also another 10 babies in little incubators, and it, it's scary, really yep. scary. And he wouldn't have expected that he would have been there without you as well. No, and where we didn't know, we didn't have any warning. So yep. it was, you're going in to have a baby, and you're going to be going home as a little family. Well. In fact, it was the opposite. Yeah. We went in and had our baby, and, and it was just an absolute whirlwind. Yeah, and you talk about the you were scared of the stoma? Yeah, I was petrified of him. How long did it sort of like take you to get comfortable? That Were you worried that you were hurting him, or you just didn't have the yeah. confidence? Yeah, I was worried I'd hurt him, because when you would take his bag off, and the spray, it would be a bit cold. It wasn't hurting him at all. I know that now. But at the time, I thought that I was really hurting him because he would scream. So I'd see Jack doing it and I would think, I can't do that to him. There's no way can I do that. And where he was so tiny, he was only six pounds free, but he went down to um, 
five pound twelve, I think he was, that he came home that. Um, that's why he couldn't come home on the fifth day because he kept on losing weight. But I was I was petrified of him. Yeah. But it was it was the middle of the night. I remember it. Of his stone were late and Big Jack had gone in with Little Jack, so he was in his bedroom, and I just I was looking at Jimmy and I thought. No, we're going to do it tonight. We're going to do it. And I went in now and I I didn't want to do it with Jack watching me because I felt like I, if I'd done it wrong, I'd be more upset with myself. So I just went in there and done it. And I was really, I was really proud of myself. And then Jack in the morning, he was really shocked that I'd, I'd done it. I'd imagine like every parent being told that the child was born with imperfect anus and erectile malformation must have been a, a real shock how did you cope with that to start with did you start googling and doing research and trying to find out which is what most people do yeah, these days I did, yeah i did do that and mr tan his surgeon i remember when we went when i went up there on the fifth day and we sat down and mr tan came in to tell us and i was holding jimmy and he was telling me all of the what was happening, what it was, what was going to be happening. It was, I can't really explain the feeling of the guilt that I felt that I had passed on to him because I, I felt like it was my fault. Which it absolutely yeah. isn't. No, but at, at the time I was holding this little baby, he's got all these problems and I felt terrible. Yeah, it was, it was a lot to take in, a hell of a lot to take in. And to try and understand it, I'd never, ever heard of it before. How did it go when you had to explain to your family? Well, when I had Jimmy and come home, I didn't actually talk to anyone. I really? couldn't answer the phone to anybody. I, I couldn't talk about it until he came home. I was having like panic attacks and everything. I couldn't talk about it with anyone. So it wasn't until Jimmy came home and then probably a couple of weeks after Jimmy was home could I get my head around what was happening because I couldn't talk about it because I didn't I didn't know myself people would ask me questions and I would feel awful that I didn't know the answers because I didn't know what I was talking about yeah and you hadn't been exposed to talk to the doctor because Jack was with him wasn't he at the time yeah yeah how have you dealt with it all mentally it sounds like at the start it was a real struggle how are you coping now yeah now um i once i had got my head around it and i'd built up the courage i wasn't scared of him anymore i just okay. thought right that's it let's crack on now we're gonna do it we're gonna get you better <laughs> and everything's gonna be all right yeah, it is. And I think I was very numb throughout all the operations and everything. I was very numb to what was going on. When you were talk, reading the story, you got incredibly emotional and you were really surprised about that. And you said to me that I, I can't believe I'm crying. Like, do you think it's the first time you've sort of like let that emotion out? Yeah, so I think that... Obviously, when Jimmy had, hadn't come home and he was still in Norfolk, I was very emotional because I didn't know what was going on. I just had a baby, but I didn't have my baby. There was a lot of emotion there. And then when he came home, I was really frightened of him and I would cry at him constantly for about the 10 days until I plucked up the courage. And then I just thought, I've... I've got to get over this now. This is my baby and I need to look after my baby and we're going to get for it together. We're going to be fine. He's going to be absolutely fine. Let's just take one step at a time and cross each bridge as it comes. And I think I was numb to it all. I just carried on. You did. And you look, look at, look at him now. He's thriving. What would be your advice to there's going to be mothers and parents that are uh, listening to this podcast who have got young kids now like you know even less than 12 months what would, yeah. would you be your greatest advice to them because you've just 
going through it and you've just been through it? Well, as I say, I was so scared of Jimmy and his stoma because obviously I didn't, I didn't understand about stomas. I didn't understand about any of it. So I was actually scared of nothing. There is nothing to be scared of, of your own baby with a stoma. It's not, it's not a scary thing. No. And once you see past it, then it's fine and you can deal with it. It's hard, but looking back now, well, the, the worst is over. He's yep. doing really good. That's He's good. doing amazing. And you have to be their strength as well, as much as what they are your strength. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the one issue that every parent dreads really is the dilations. How did you and Jack handle that initially? So at first, when we went to the hospital and Mr. Tam was showing us, Jimmy was he was bleeding. He was trying to wriggle. He was screaming. There was people holding him down. It was awful. It was so traumatic. And I was thinking, there is no way am I going to be able to do this to him. And Jack was thinking the same thing, but we just didn't say it to each other until after. We was both trying to stay strong, I think, for each other. Um, but once we was out of the hospital environment and we was at home and it was more relaxed and Jimmy was more comfortable, it was it wasn't nice, but it wasn't as hard as in the hospital. It was still it was still hard, but it got easier, a lot easier. And the pers persevering with it and doing it every day, Jimmy got used to it. And then he was so, he was relaxed with it. He wasn't, um, he wouldn't put up a fight and it wouldn't hurt him. He never bled again after that day. Really? Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, going up the sizes every week, like when you see a nine and then you see a 16 of what your goal is, you think, I am never going to be able to do that. But the 16 is easier than what the nine was. I suppose you learn that you're doing it for him, not to him. Do you know what? That is something which stuck with me, and it was you that said that to me. I remember I messaged you, and I was a bit upset about it. And you said, remember, you're not doing it to him, you're doing it for him. And I actually said that to another mum, which I've um, spoken to over Instagram. Her little boy's got exactly the same. And they're doing the dilations and she said, it's awful because they'd only just started. And I said, remember, you're doing it for him, not to him. And she was like, that isn't like amazing advice. And that was that come from you. I'm glad it helped. We sort of like started talking probably, what, six months after Jimmy was born, do you think? Yes, because Mr. Tan was, his surgeon was the man which told me about you. It's been so wonderful for me to see how far you and Jimmy have come in that time because yeah. there was some really difficult times there. Yes, yes. Well, but when you see how strong a little baby can be, you've got, you've got to be strong because your baby's just gone through seven and a half hours of operations and he's laying there smiling at you. Call him mama, so mama. you sit there and cry because <laughs> <laughs> he's just been through what he's been through. And, well, he's he done amazing. He's a strong little boy. And he'll continue to amaze you every day. Yes. And how's Jack handling it all now, your partner? He's, yeah, really good. Really yep. good. He Because, um, obviously, I've gone to the operations with Jimmy in Norfolk, but only one of us can go. So he stays at home with little Jack. So that's obviously hard because our family's been broken up for them a few weeks. But no, we're doing really good. I'm ready for his, for the next stage now because we've had a we've had a little break between the operations and his, well, you'd never you'd never know there was anything that he's never had done. Yeah. And we've had a little rest from hospitals, but um, March the tenth we go back to Mr. Ambarrison and find out the next surgery date. So hopefully that won't be too long away because every surgery is six months apart and he's got three to have. So 
the sooner the better, really. We'll have to stay in Norfolk for a week after because he'll have a catheter. Because I'm two and a half hours away from the hospital, we'll have to stay nearby. And what your story is a real evidence of how it is a family that has to get you through. It's It just can't be one or the other. It, you need to have a team, don't you? Yes, yes, definitely. And how do you feel about sharing your story? You're looking forward to people listening to it? Yeah, I am, as long as they don't hear the crying bits. <laughs> oh, well, I'll see what I can do there. Yeah. Just one thing that I, I want to talk about is, it's brilliant, is that you got a special room made for Jimmy. Yes. It wasn't actually me. That is uh, Big Jack. He did that as a surprise. So I, we had the man come in and paint a Winnie the Pooh mural in Jimmy's bedroom and Jack got the man to do the one in 5,000 over the bridge. But those listening, I'm going to post it on the Facebook group, again, the video, because you've got to see it to believe it. It is the most incredible artwork and perfect for a little fella. He loves it as well. He wakes up every morning and waves at Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Isn't that wonderful? So, Billy... I can't thank you enough for sharing yours and Jimmy's story. And I've got to thank Jimmy for making some um, very guest appearances there during the, uh, during the podcast. <laughs> and he was there to help you through it. So it was yeah, wonderful awesome. hearing your story and, you know, and the emotion coming out, but most importantly that how things can, as bad as they look at sometimes you can, you always get through it. Yes, you do. Well, thank you very much for having us. It's been our pleasure. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.